how fair is the COVID-19 booster, with vaccines still a scarce commodity? Just 4% of people in poorer countries have received a shot. In the European Union, it's nearly 70%. And yet the EU and other places are already administering boosters. Scientists say the third dose is necessary to top up immune protection in vulnerable groups. But the World Health Organization is outraged. No more vaccines should go to countries that have already vaccinated more than 40% of their population until COVAX has the vaccines it needs to help other countries get there too. Rich countries want to protect their people. Poor nations don't have enough jabs to do so. I'm Ben Fazul and welcome. The most vulnerable are lining up for their third jab in many countries, while the debate over boosters and vaccine equity continues. Although recent data suggests a booster for everyone might be key to breaking the next wave. Standing in line for a booster shot, like here at this pop-up vaccination center in West Jerusalem. Since August, Israel has made the third vaccination of the BioNTech-Pfizer vaccine gradually available to people over the age of 12. It is really important to help keep everyone healthy. Also, I won't get infected and sick or infect others. And it is a decision by our country that all have to get vaccinated, so I'm getting it. Um, so in Israel, like things are slowly beginning to open up again. There's definitely a mask mandate and people are still being careful. Almost four million eligible people out of a population of nine million have received their third shot by now. Just two months ago, new infections with the Delta variant surpassed 10,000 cases per day, with hospitals seeing many more severely ill patients. And studies suggested that immunity was waning after six months. There is no question that the third vaccine, the booster, saved Israel. When we started analyzing the new infections and then the severe infections, based on when they were vaccinated, we came to understand that the most important issue in the balance is the waning of the vaccine, of the immunity, rather than the Delta. Israel ramped up its booster campaign and new infections and hospitalizations began to slow. In addition, the government also tightened its Green Pass system. The app that shows the vaccination status is needed to get into venues like this health club. Those eligible who didn't get their third shot had their pass cancelled. Everybody these days have the Green Pass on his telephone and we check it every day when they come in. It's a little bit, sometimes it's inconvenience, but people understand and we really try to make a safe zone here and people cooperate. The system isn't perfect. Compliance by businesses and people can be patchy. With the effects of the booster kicking in, the country also opened up its airport for foreign visitors. Ben Gurion Airport, Israel's main gateway, had been largely closed to foreigners since March 2020. Strict rules include testing before and after arrival. But the entry point remains a concern for health officials. We cannot celebrate that we are out of the pandemic. Now, between the waves, our big concern is how not to have the fifth wave of not to have another variant coming to Israel. Israel is now looking at vaccinating children under the age of 12 and is closely monitoring how long a third dose will offer protection. Yair Lewis is an Israeli physician and was part of the country's COVID-19 advisory team. Much more data is out since we last had you on the show. Just how necessary and how good are these boosters? Well, hi, Ben. As, as you just said in the segment, uh, the infections were at a high of over 10,000 new infections per day. And the health system was strained and with hundreds of severe COVID cases and, and deaths were rising too. That was when the booster campaign was initiated. And, and now... Um, the infection level is very low and severe cases and deaths have plummeted. So I would say it was very effective. 
why is the immune response after this booster so much stronger than after the first or second vaccination? So, so this is an interesting phenomenon that we've seen in other vaccines. And even um, with the COVID vaccine, there is data that shows that people who have received the first two uh, uh, doses um, with a larger dosing interval of 10 weeks versus three weeks, this is something that was seen in the UK, for example, uh, the immune response was better. So um, uh, there is some issue of maturation of the immune response and, and each dose, um, when it's uh, widely spaced, adds to, to that response and makes it um, stronger and more longer lasting. And uh, we heard in that report that doctors are keeping an eye on just how long that booster does provide protection. W when do you think a fourth shot would be necessary? I don't know if a fourth shot will be necessary, Ben, but we're going to have to track that and see um, the, the data that the Israeli Ministry of Health is collecting is very detailed, and that is what allowed Israel in June of this year and, uh, you know, t to notice that infections were going up. And, and this data was, you know, it was criticized around the world um, in the beginning, um, but it turned out that the analysis that the Ministry of Health ran um, were correct. And we were, we were seeing, in fact, um, waning immunity of the uh, uh, original first two doses. And this was a phenomenon that was later on seen in different countries around the world. So what I think uh, is going to happen is we're going to keep tracking that information and we're just going to have to wait and see if we do see a new spike in cases and analyse that information again. If a fourth um, dose is necessary, could, could it be adapted to uh, keep new variants at bay, for example? So that's an interesting question. Does the uh, a booster dose have to be variant specific? Um, so what we were seeing uh, uh, with the booster shot is that it was very, very effective against Delta, even though it was not redesigned specifically for those uh, uh, differences in, in the Delta variant versus the original variant, original uh, um, um, COVID virus. Um, so the thing is that even when you do adapt a, a vaccine to a new variant, um, and this is something that seems with that is seen with the a seasonal influenza vaccine, sometimes the immune response is already this an effect called a phenomenon called immune imprinting. Um, the immune response is already more specific for uh, the original uh, uh, virus that it was exposed to. So even if the uh, um, uh, vaccine is adapted specifically. Um, it may not uh, incite a, uh, a really specific response. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that, first of all, it's not even clear that this is needed. Uh, second of all, these um, variant-specific vaccines are already in development and testing by Pfizer and Moderna, um, but we're not sure how effective they will be. Could you also tell us why a, a third BioNTech shot was used, for example, and not Moderna? What, what difference does that make? Um, I don't think there's a big difference. Um, I know that Israel has a large stock of, uh, of the Pfizer shot, so I guess for logistic reasons, um, some people were given a Moderna shot. Um, I don't think there's any specific uh, scientific reason to do that, as you know, in the U.S. they have authorized sort of a, a mix and match strategy where you can get a, a different vaccine. Uh, even if you, uh, as a booster, even if you got, uh, uh, um, let's say, Pfizer for the first two shots, you can get a different vaccine um, for the booster. Yeah, yeah, Lewis, thank you very much for being on the show. Pleasure talking to you. Sure, thank you, Ben. Here's an interesting question now for those who may be vaccinated but have suddenly caught COVID. Here's Derek Williams. My husband was vaccinated, then two weeks later tested positive for COVID-19. Could that be due to the vaccine? No, but depending on what kind of test he took, um, for different reasons, there are basically two different types of diagnostics. The most accurate is called a polymerase chain reaction, or a PCR test. Now, it works by amplifying tiny amounts of SARS-CoV-2's genetic material in a sample up to levels where it can be detected. Um, exactly why vaccines can't cause a positive PCR result is complicated scientifically, but more or less comes down to the fact 
that most of the currently approved vaccines uh, don't use a full version of the real virus to kickstart an immune response. They instead contain uh, short stretches of genetic material that, that don't replicate, that degrade fast in cells and that aren't detected or amplified by PCR. The second class of detection diagnostics called antigen tests, they work by revealing the presence of certain proteins that are specific to SARS-CoV-2. Um, they're cheaper and faster, but also less accurate than PCR. Because some vaccines cause your body to produce the coronavirus spike protein to, to kickstart your immune response to the pathogen, it doesn't seem impossible that an antigen test, which detects proteins, might be confused by that. Um, however, to avoid any confusion, most commercial antigen tests are not designed to detect spike protein, but other coronavirus proteins. Um, in addition, vaccines are injected into the arm, but detection tests, they swab the nose or the throat. The cells there are not the ones producing spike proteins after vaccination. So long and short, vaccines don't cause COVID-19 tests to turn up positive. Um, the presence of the virus does. And finally, Auckland has reopened its shopping malls after a three-month lockdown. Excited New Zealanders queued outside overnight to take advantage of retailers' early bird deals. The government is easing restrictions as vaccination rates pick up. Libraries, museums and zoos are also reopening, but hospitality venues must remain closed. Nice to have you with us. Stay safe and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.